Okay, so hopefully that is working. Yep, okay, fantastic. So thank you everybody for joining us. And just as we get started, I'd like to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet and work, and we'd like to pay our respect to their elders past, present and emerging. And I would like to pay my respects to all the First Nations people joining us online today um, from Australia and beyond. And uh, I'd also like to extend my respects to the Ghana people on whose land I'm joining you from today. So yes, so if you'd like to share that uh, with whose lands, traditional lands you're, you're joining us from, please feel welcome to do that mm. in the chat and have a look and see um, who else is here as well. So thank you. Excellent. So as a bit of an overview of what we're going to cover today, um, I'm going to talk a little bit, oh, whoops, I went I went one slide ahead. Sorry about that. I'll be talking a little bit about the ARDC. I'll be talking about ARDC's research data commons and also the Hassan Indigenous research data commons. And I'll be talking about um, ARDC's pages for Hass and Indigenous research and also do an overview of some tools, platforms and services. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about how you can keep up to date and ways to participate uh, with us here at the ARDC. And then we'll round up at the end and hopefully there's a little bit of time for some questions at the end. All right, so, so we are the ARDC. So um, yeah, so our purpose at the ARDC is to provide Australian researchers with competitive advantage through data. And our mission, is to accelerate research and innovation by driving excellence in the creation, analysis and retention of high quality data assets. And who are our audiences? So our audiences, you can see our three main, main audiences here on the slide. So um, we have three main audiences and this is important uh, to, to help us to separate out the services that we provide for each audience here. So all of our services are for researchers, but we often work alongside the people who work with researchers for our service delivery. So these include, um, so with some of our key stakeholders include our funders, the National International Research Data Organization, and also our ARDC members. So you can see in the middle slide that we have organisations that build infrastructure or support researchers to manage their research data. So these are people who work with our researchers um, to, oh yes, people who work with our researchers like university librarians and those who run our, di our digital research infrastructure. So that's part of the background that I came from before I worked with the ARDC. I was part of this, this middle cohort of people. And to our right, this is our most, my, well, some of our most fabulous people that we're really looking forward to connecting with more and more. To our right are the end users of our services. So we're really looking to grow this cohort as well. So if you're a researcher here, send it out in the chat. We wanna know you, we wanna get to know you. And um, we are looking for and really excited to connect with researchers from any discipline um, and we are looking at academic, government, and also industry researchers in Australia from any discipline, from any institution using any technology. So everything we do here at the ARDC is to support our researchers. And people, people are really at the, at the heart of everything we do at the ARDC. And so on our, on our graphic, on, the, on that left top hand corner, you can see people there. So that's a big major, major focus for us. But you may be asking yourself, if you're not already familiar with us, what is a research data commons? So a research data commons brings together, and I think this, this, uh, this slide shows it really quite well, brings together people, skills, data, and related resources, such as compute, storage, software, and models, to enable researchers to conduct world-class data-intensive research. And yeah, and people, our researchers, People are at the center of all we do. We can't we can't do it without a fabulous research community that we that we have. And here we can see this great slide here. This this uh, really really gorgeous sort of matrix kind of kind of image here. 
and it gives you a bit more of an idea of um, this is a bit of a pictorial way of sort of describing what we do. So, so what's the we'll, we'll talk a bit more about semantic da data commons. Oops, sorry, trigger happy on my mouse there. Um, so the ARDC semantic research data commons. So we're developing national scale data assets, digital tools and platforms within three thematic areas to address Australia's science and research priorities. So you can see those sort of those vertical pillars. So we've got one that says people, one that says planet and one that says house and, in, and indigenous. So those are our research priority areas for the ARDC. So the, um, the verticals are supporting our underpinning infrastructure, which are those horizontal lines represented by that blue, the pink, the yellow, and the purple there. So those, those are more of our cloud compute, our horizontal um, underpinning structures, which are, yeah, cloud compute and data retention, expertise and training and outreach activities. So all of these are weaving through and supporting those main research themes with People, Planet, and also our house and Indigenous research communities. So throughout this, we're creating this great matrix structure, which is all about sharing best practice across domains. And our, our, and our RDCs, our Research Data Commons, will result in significant optimization. They'll drive efficiency and provide maximum return on investment. And so with here at the ARDC, we, we support um, open research and the FAIR principles, which ensure that data is findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable for all researchers, and also the CARE principles, uh, which describe how data should be treated to ensure that Indigenous governance over the data and its use are to be respected. And CARE stands for Collective Benefit, Authority to Control, Responsibility and Ethics. And we'll talk about uh, more of this as we progress as well uh, throughout. So I will mention all, um, all of these principles, these two main principles again, um, as we progress through this uh, webinar. And so we just like to acknowledge that in implementing these principles, the Research Data Commons uh, need to collaborate closely with our Indigenous communities. And this is really crucial, and especially so for the um, HAS and Indigenous Research Data Commons. And so this is so that um, we can work with Indigenous communities, elders and organisations to co-design uh, policies and practices that are culturally responsive, inclusive and empowering. So let's talk a little bit more about FAIR again as well. So FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable and FAIR underpins everything we do. So the FAIR principles for research data management were published in 2016 and are related to making digital assets findable, accessible, interoperable. And so all of our um, all of our things can work across different platforms and also reusable. Oh, sorry, what was that? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, yep, yeah, okay. So, um, so we put, support the FAIR and CARE principles and we ask for data to be as open as ethically possible because research uh, inputs and outputs drive research impact quality, translation and innovation, which is great for research and society. So we recognise that translating the FAIR and CARE principles into practice will vary for each discipline as well. And here in this slide, we can see FAIR and CARE together. And you can also see a number of uh, links in this slide as well. So um, these slides can be available after this presentation. So if you're interested in them and accessing the links, I've got the fabulous Kit who's um, busily placing some links in there for me. So thanks again, Kit, this is great to have your help. Um, but we can also send the slides and the slides there will take you to some of these great resources. So there are qu quite a few more for the care principles as well. So you can find out more about both fair and care principles on the ARDC uh, website in our, in our resources section. Um, but I'll just tell you a little bit more about care. So care is really great for when your research involves handling, managing, or analyzing data that includes Indigenous data. So if you are working with Indigenous data, we, we would like to um, suggest that you consider applying the care principles for Indigenous data governance. And so what are the care principles? Um, the care principles describe how data should be treated to ensure that Indigenous governance over the data 
and its use are respected. And CARE, this acronym, we can see it uh, here in the slide. And so I'll just describe it a little bit more. So collective benefits can be described as data ecosystems that can be designed and function in ways that enable Indigenous peoples to derive benefit over that data. Authority to control. So Indigenous peoples' rights and interests in Indigenous data must be recognised and their authority to control such data uh, should be empowered. And responsibility. So those working with Indigenous data have a responsibility to share how those data are used to support Indigenous people's self-determination and collective benefit. And ethics, crucial Indigenous people's rights and well-being should be the primary concern at all stages of the data life cycle and across the, da the data ecosystem. So, um, so this, this image has come from uh, GIDA, which is Global Indigenous Data Alliance. And, um, and these principles reflect the crucial role of data in advancing Indigenous innovation and self-determination. So they ensure that movements like the open data movement, whether they're advocating and pursuing respect, the people and the purpose behind the data. Um, so if you want to know more about FAIR, we have more information there on our website as well. And there's also a fabulous webinar which was produced by um, uh, Jenny Fuster, the director of the Hassan Indigenous Research Data Commons, and also Robert McClellan, uh, industry fellow in Indigenous Languages and Program Manager of the Language Data Commons of Australia from the University of Queensland. So highly recommend you have a look and, um, and watch that webinar. It's fantastic. And we have a lot of other great resources on our site as well. So now that we've talked a lot about the underpinning principles of FAIR and CARE, and we've uh, had a look about what our research data commons is, let's have a look at our research data commons. So this is the People Research Data Commons. Um, so the People Research Data Commons is, uh, is one of our fantastic research digital infrastructure programs, and it supports health and biomedical researchers in solving some of Australia's biggest societal health and medical challenges for Australia. It's growing, it's under consultation, it's inviting uh, you to come and work and work with the uh, People Research Data Commons. We are expanding all of them in the in the new year. So please, please do get involved and uh, check them out on our website for more information about that. So, and our next Research Data Commons, I'm just gonna show you very briefly, is the Planet Research Data Commons. So this is, uh, a research data commons aimed at earth and environmental research. So it supports um, researchers in the, in the earth and environmental areas, and it's looking at new digital infrastructure um, to be delivered uh, through creating shared accessible data and digital research tools so that researchers can tackle some really big challenges for our environment, which include adapting to climate change, saving threatened species, and reversing ecosystem deterioration. So we invite you to come and have a look more at our, at our website to find out more about, about the Planet Research Data Commons. And next, we have our focus for today, which is the Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences, or HAS, and Indigenous Research Data Commons. So this is national scale data infrastructure for house and Indigenous research. And it's been created in collaboration with Indigenous Australians, the research community, industry and government. So the house Indigenous Research Data Commons is harnessing research data to enhance um, Australian social and cultural wellbeing. And we hope it will help Australia understand and preserve our culture, history and heritage. So a bit more about the Hass and Indigenous Research Data Commons. You can see these, these are four symbols here. So these are four of the main projects of the Hass and Indigenous Research Data Commons. So these four activities were funded through the October 2020 Research Infrastructure Investment Plan. And the ARDC has held a number of workshops and roundtables to gauge researcher requirements and these four activities are now in full swing so they're operating now and working um, and ready for you so by clustering these projects we can engage deeply with the community to identify and build their capability and ensure the best practice is shared across the projects and to other domains so a key consideration is identifying the activities that will benefit um, all of these areas and one example it's been the need for standard access and authentication for research community to enable collaborations. 
So all four of our streams are, are working and, cr and creating and leveraging on this, and it can be rolled out beyond the Hassan Indigenous RDC, as can all a lot of the learnings from the Hassan Indigenous uh, Research Data Commons to People Planet, and also beyond as well. All right, so what does this mean for researchers? So for our researchers, we've created some really great resources. So um, if you go to the ARDC like web, web homepage, you can see that there's this fantastic purple tab. So if one of the biggest takeaways you take away from today's webinar is that there are research data commons at the ARDC and also there's a purple tab there for researchers, I think 90% of my job here today has been done. So that purple tab, once you see it, you can't unsee it, it's there and you'll see it a few more times in this presentation as well. So, um, so this purple tab will take you to our curated pages that we've created for researchers. So they have um, information like data sets, programs and projects, and also resources uh, for researchers. And if you click on that purple tab, you'll see another tab and you can see that purple tab is still there and that's no accident. It's to keep you contained within these um, these, these fantastic pages for uh, researchers. And uh, these resources have been created to accelerate your research. And we have lots of digital research needs covered, including data sets, tools, skills, and more. All right. so. Within these pages as well, um, if you're on the ARDC website, you'll be able to scroll down and then you'll see we've got some really popular um, resources and services. It just doesn't matter which discipline uh, you're working in. This, these ones are relevant to everybody. So we have great resources um, and tools for working with uh, sensitive data. So if you were to click on that, that will take you to some information on our website about working with sensitive data. We have um, another area there, you can see working with research software. So we, we strongly believe and promote research software as being a first class output of research. So we believe very strongly in that for ARDC. So you can have a look at best practice guides and, and also learn a little bit more. We even have a prize that we give away called the Eureka Prize for working with research software. So please have a look at those at that information. And if you're working with your own data sets and you like to see how fair they are, how findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable your data sets are. We also have a really great data self-assessment tool there too. So that's what that uh, link will take you to. And then we have an amazing research environment called uh, the Nectar Research Cloud. Some of our platforms are hosted on this cloud. And if you, if you pop into this link here, it'll take you to information, training, resources, and uh, information about upcoming webinars about how to use the Nectar Research Cloud to actually give yourself a bit of extra compute capability for Australian researchers. All right, so here is the main, our main part of, of the curated resources we're focusing on today. That's why I have this, this great big gray arrow pointing towards the resource that says uh, the resources for Hass and Indigenous researchers. So if you are on this, on our curated researchers pages, you can see again that purple tab in the top corner that says for researchers. This will take you to our resources for Hass and Indigenous researchers. So we have curated data sets, tools, and upskilling material for data-driven research in the Hass and Indigenous disciplines. We put all of these together for our Hass and Indigenous research community. So if we were to click on that, it would take us to a site that looks much a page, whoops, that much looks much like this. And um and that's your portal into, into, the, um, into the pages for our House Indigenous researchers. So if you were to look further in here, you would um, you can see there is, we'll come back to it. On this page, you can see there's a yellow button that says, get your free researcher's guide. Um, if you are following us along online, feel free to click on that button. Or what you can do is go to this page later. And we, we will also address this, um, uh, this resource a little bit later in the presentation as well. But it's um it's a very good thing it will send you um, little bite size um, material for you to work through a lot of the tools of the Hassan Indigenous um, research pages. So I'll just come to our next one. So this these names may all look familiar. So earlier in this presentation I showed you a slide and it was like a blue and white slide and it had had three uh, sorry four four areas of the Hassan Indigenous Research Data Commons. These are those same four areas in more of a pictorial form. So we have the Language Data Commons of Australia. So this is one major area. So you can click and go in and explore resources for the Language Data Commons of Australia by going into, into that tab. 
Uh, or you could go into the Improving Indigenous Research Capability tab to, um, to learn more about resources within this, within this section as well in this project. And you can look into the uh, ARDC Community Data Lab to find tools uh, for and data sets for collaborative HASS research and projects. And you can also pop in and have a look at the social science projects as well, which are on the last one there on this page. And today we're going to just look at a, at a small selection of some of the tools that are currently available through the Hassan Indigenous Research Data Commons, because there's quite a few tools that are presently available. So today we're going to have a look at the Australian Text Analytics Platform um, for looking at um, analysing and looking at processing text uh, in an open source environment. We're going to have a quick look at the time layered cultural map of Australia. And um, I'm going to skip over Troy for a moment, just tell you about the Gazetteer of, of Historical Australian Places. We'll have a look at that. Those two go really well together. So we'll talk about those together. And the Trove Enhancements, um, you may be familiar with Trove. If you're not, you should definitely have a look and also have a look at our guides and resources for working with, with Trove and also the Language Data Commons of Australia as well. So these, these are some, some tools and services and projects we're gonna show you uh, today. All right, so the Australian Text Analytics Platform. This is an absolutely fabulous suite of tools um, that I highly recommend that you that you have a look at. So text analytics is a suite of methods which enable data-driven research uh, by extracting and analyzing machine-readable information from within unstructured text. So due to the increasing availability of amounts of unstructured text, such techniques are becoming more and more important across diverse research disciplines. So you don't even have to be a Hass and Indigenous researcher uh, within those particular fields. This is equally as useful in any in any field that uses text uh, for its research and analysis, which is uh, many, many, many of them. So text analysis, analysis tends to happen at either a basic, generic level, handled with existing software packages, or with custom code specifically developed by programmers for a particular project. So ATAP or ATAP as we affectionately call it here, uh, supports researchers transitioning into code-based text analysis, immediately benefiting researchers with flexibility of approach and also enabling reproducibility and reuse with the possibility of exporting their results and workflow, workflows, sorry, as a fully documented research object. So that's amazing. So you can actually have producible research created through your workflow as you're working through with these um, with this particular uh, platform and the tools. So ATAP is a fully functional and growing collaborative cloud-based workbench environment. So it's ready, it's ready right now. It's already got lots of tools and things you can you can really get it get involved with right now. So it brings together users as well as providers of data and text analytics tools. So you can you can just jump on now, you can jump on after, you can jump on even during this presentation if you like and want to get started. So it encourages researchers to adopt new methods. Uh, and it's also leading to greater flexibility and transparency in research workflows. And the platform's free, accessible right now to researchers with a broad range of experience and skills, including beginners, you can start at the beginning, and across a range of disciplines. So you don't need to be a HASP researcher, as I mentioned before, to use a HASP tool. It's useful to any discipline that works with text. So um, you can jump right in from that, from that link there. Um, so next we're going to have a look at uh, Trove Enhancements. So Trove Enhancer. So Trove is is amazing. It's um it's a massive online platform which is owned and run by the National Library of Australia. It's used by more than thirty thousand people every day. So including members of the humanities, arts, and social science research community, and they all use it to uh, create, analyze, and access Australia's uh, cultural data. So Trove is an aggregation and a shared repository of cultural collections from more than 900, it's a lot, 900 gallery, library, archive and museum, or we call that, uh, an acronym for that we have is GLAM partners, including 41 million pages of digitized collection material. So its content uh, is fully searchable uh, in the, the digitized collection material that is, uh, opening new research questions for um, Australian house and indigenous researchers to explore. And um, so our project, uh, which is with Trove Enhancements, has improved the Trove pages for researchers 
and also he also updated the public uh, Trove API or application programming interface to be to provide better support for Australian house researchers. So we've we've made that more possible for you to work to work with that um, that research in that in that environment. So um, so we, one of the really great things about uh, the Trove enhancements is the Trove Data Guide. It's just part of it. Uh, so this guide explores the different types of data available from Trove. So it sort of helps you understand what's in Trove, what it is and how you can access it, and also what you can do with it, which is pretty exciting. So it aims to give researchers a critical understanding of Trove data, both its limits and its possibilities. So if you follow that link, uh, you'll come to a page which looks much like this. And there's a lot more on that page. So don't, this only fit, uh, only part of it fit in this screen grab. So you can see here, um, you do have explanations in there about the guide, what Trove is, and um, you can you can have a bit of a work about understanding how the search works and how to go further and beyond the search, and then accessing the data and getting much more um, much more into it with the uh, Trove API introduction. So it's great. It has resources. It has resources on how to use uh, use this fantastic um, platform and lots of guides. And often, if you keep in touch with us, we'll, we'll let you know when there's uh, webinars and all sorts of other ways to really fine tune and take a really deep dive into, uh, into this fabulous uh, resource as well. All right, so we have uh, some fantastic uh, geo, ge uh, geographic information science kind of tools. So we've got the TLC map. So it's not the tender loving uh, care map, it is the time layered cultural map of Australia. So it's got a really cute name and it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic. And it does exactly as it seems to suggest. It is a time layered uh, cultural map. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing and exciting. And um, yeah, it's brilliant. So you, you don't actually need any GIS pre-training to use the TLC map, but it does, um, it does actually help you uh, show patterns in uh, house and indigenous research in this beautiful visualized way by by using maps um, as well, and it links up really well with the time uh, the time layered cultural maps. Sorry, links up very very well with the Gazetteer Historical Australian Places. So these tools are both available. Whoops, together. So this is the Gazetteer of Australia of Historical Australian Places. So you can jump into this tool, and if you access the service via the links on on this. Um, on this slide here, which we can send you again, the slides at the end, you'll see something like this when you get in there. So you can see the there's a logo for the TLC map there and also the logo for the Gazetteer of Historical Australian Places. And what's really, really cool is um before this, that was that was just more of a more of a like just a resource of a list of like mainly places as well. So this is actually made available now through a, an amazing um this amazing mapping capability. And in 2021, the TLC map won an amazing prize. It won gold for education services at the Good Design Awards um, with more house and indigenous researchers expecting, uh, we really expect more people to take advantage of the TLC map and GHAP, as we call it. We, we talk about their um, names as acronyms. So these are both hosted on the ARDC uh, Nectar Research Cloud, and you can use them right now. So you can have a bit of a look. Um, you can see you can uh, jump in there and look at different map map views. You can look at street maps, the Google satellite maps, and then you can start to work with and apply um, what is in the in the Gazetteer of, of Historic Australian Places. And you can also use it to work with your own research as well. So we have uh, researchers who apply for uh, LEAF grants to work with the um, the TLC map and the Gazetteer of, Histor of Historical Australian Places, and they do some really amazing research. So I've just got a quote here from uh, Professor Hugh Craig, who is the director of the University of Newcastle's Centre for Linguistics and Literary Computing, um, and he is also involved with the, and he's the leader of the TLC map and GHAP program, uh, projects. And he says, we are embarking on a new LEAF funded project this year to detect place names and documents and programmatically link them to places in our gazetteer for instant mapping. And we're also developing ways of finding hotspots and spatially temporal data sets and working on historical census data to add population numbers by year as a foundation map layer in the platform. And overall, the aim is to bring new digital tools and resources to bear on some of the central concerns of the humanities, 
and we hope researchers will use these tools and resources for new important perspectives on Australian history and culture. So representing uh, research visually this way and in this digital way is just such a fantastic way to, um, to work with uh, humanities and social science research. And you don't, again, you don't need to be um, a, a, um, a GIS native to do this. You can actually jump in and use these tools. And again, there are webinars and training opportunities to better learn how to use these fantastic resources. All right, and, and while we're here, I'm um, having a look at what some of our um, researcher case studies have said. Um, we've got uh, two, two quotes here from uh, some of our fantastic people that work with us and partner with us as well. So we have uh, a, great, um, a great quote here from Robert McClellan, um, about how we support House and Indigenous research and researchers. So Robert McClellan is a Gurung Gurung man and industry fellow and program manager at the University of Queensland, working on the ARGC supported language data commons of Australia. And he has said, and he's, he's talking about um, language, working with Indigenous language data and language data. So till now, he's, he said, uh, finding language data has really relied on talking to people. And if you weren't connected with academics, well, then you would never know. With the language data commons, if you apply the right search, you'll be able to access that material. But you'll also be able to access anthropological materials and other papers that contain less linguistic terminology that can help you get a better understanding about your language. Um, yeah, and so there's been some really great work being done in um, Indigenous language repatriation and this really speaks to um, to that because unless you did unless you do know about a lot of those linguistic resources out there, you it would be very difficult to actually be able to find them and access them. So that's some of the great work which is happening with the Language Data Commons of Australia, and for um, a different area of the Hass uh, of the Hass research kind of sphere, um, we have Professor Christopher Petty, who leads the uh, ARDC supported project for housing data analytics. So um, housing data analytics, he says, is available through many agencies across governments and jurisdictions, but the data is fragmented. There isn't a central piece to springboard off and find those data sets. So the Australian housing data analytics platform will help direct users to the best available housing data that exists, whether it's in government or industry. And this is now, um, this fantastic analytics platform is now available as well. So you can find that by navigating to our, to our fabulous pages. We have lots of great, um, great case studies and quotes from our fabulous people that we work with. Um, so we've got Professor Michael Four, who leads an ARDC supported project to build. So he works with the language uh, data commons, and he is and he has said here that humanities traditionally has done things on a smaller scale, but he thinks that people are seeing the value of forming research groups. And the language data commons is a good example of research communities coming together on a common project to build something together. And language is something that belongs to all of us. So, you know, just some great, some great words there from, from Michael. And yes, again, um, the ARDC, we're all about people and we really want to bring people and researchers together using this fantastic infrastructure that we've been building with our with our fabulous communities. All right, so here are some more tools and services. We're not going to jump into these, but I do encourage you to come and have a look. This is where you can get some, um, we can see that Australian Housing Data Analytics platform is there. There's the Australian Coronial Law Library, the Australian Child and Youth Wellbeing Atlas, and the Australian Digital Observatory, which is for everything social media. That's, it's fantastic to check, to check those out. They're really great uh, platforms and assets for you to have a look at. And if you would like to have a look at some of these great tools and services and platforms that we have, if you would like to join us, we have the amazing Hass and Indigenous Research Data Commons Computational Skills Summer School. Um, you, will, you will get to meet and, and talk to Kit Greenhill, who's here with us. Uh, she'll, be, uh, she'll be doing a lion's share of work and making all of this happen. So, so thanks, Kit, uh, and uh, looking forward to working with you in, in Nam in Melbourne. And so the Houston Indigenous Research Data Commons. Um, so we're, we're inviting you, it's free. Um, if you would like to uh, come along and join us, I've included a QR code there. You can scan it with your phone and register now. Uh, so participants to the Indigenous uh, Houston Indigenous Research Data Commons Summer School will gain a practical hands-on experience. They'll build digital school skills, 
and help inspire new research outcomes in House and Indigenous research. That's what we hope for. It's um it's it's what we're really hoping to promote and um and inspire in our in our researchers. So the ARDC is inviting you to join us uh, in February, 7th to 9th of February, as you can see. Um, and so this summer school brings together um, building some practical knowledge. You'll be building digital skills and helping inspire, yes, um, all sorts of new research. So we want researchers um, in the humanities, arts, social sciences and indigenous fields of study to come and join us. And these theme streams will explore a geosocial and geospatial um, kind of flavour for this particular uh, um, for this summer school. And they'll be looking at data applications, um, yeah, and looking at them in that geosocial kind of way. So working with maps and things like the um, TLC map that we saw earlier in this presentation and things like GHAP and also taking it further using things like Jupyter Notebooks, a bit of programming. Um, so yes, yeah, so you, you get to be guided through from the absolute beginner to using code by the, by the last day to actually do some really fantastic research. So we're very excited about that. So if, if this is you or someone you know, we ask you please, um, Please share this, and um, and we would we would love love to see you there, and also get in soon because it's not too far away. February is coming soon, um, and we do have limited places. All right, so we did mention earlier that uh, we had a free guide for that will sort of walk you through a lot of the tools for the House and Indigenous Research Data Commons. So it's uh, in purple, just like the researchers tab up there. You'll find, uh, you'll see Get Your Guide Now popping up at the bottom of your screen as you're working through the House and Indigenous curated pages for uh, researchers. So this is really, this is really fun. So you sign up and each week over five weeks, you get, uh, you get a set of emails, uh, well, one email a week. And that will tell you some of the great um, data intensive research skills and tools that are curated for Hassan Indigenous researchers. So it's little bite sized chunks that will take you on a little journey over five weeks, getting you ready for the summer school or for whatever you're planning to do for next year. So I really um, encourage you to have a look. You also receive our ARDC Connect newsletter. So there are two newsletters I'm going to talk about today. So this is one of them. This is the general ARDC newsletter. We also have one for the House and Indigenous Research Data Commons, which is um, which is really, really um, important. And I'd love you to sign up to it. And that's what my next slide is all about here. So um, this is uh, our homepage for the House and Indigenous Research Data Commons. So if you're not sure about how to find your way back there, you can just Google good old House and Indigenous Ooh, sorry, excuse me, uh, research data comments. I've been talking too much. Um, and you can click on that register your interest. You can use your, uh, your you can use your device at the moment and scan on that QR code. So hopefully you can see enough of it to actually scan it and we can make it um, available through the slides as well. So that will keep you up to date with everything that's happening with the uh, House and Indigenous Research Data Commons. We'll let you know when new tools, services and platforms are available. And we'll also let you know about opportunities to get involved in uh, the code design of, um, of round tables, get involved in discussions, because um, as we said before, we are, we, the, one of the most important things about the uh, research data commons is the people and you are our people. And we would love to talk to you more about what we need to do in the future um, to, to help accelerate house and indigenous research. So, um, so I think we are, we are now at the end of, uh, of my presentation. So, um, so we've covered uh, the ARDC very briefly. We've talked about research data commons. Um, we've talked about the Hassan Indigenous Research Data Commons. We've talked about some of the pages for Hassan Indigenous Research. And we've also had a bit of an overview of some of the tools, platforms and services available. We've looked at those newsletters and as well as the, um, as the, the signing up for the researcher guide, which is that five email guide. Um, to um, to keep you up to date and ways to participate. We discussed the summer school as well, which I encourage you to join us uh, at in, um, in, in February next year. And I think my next slide is going to be our fabulous engagement team. I think some of them are here today, so feel free to yell out if you're there. So that's, our, that's my end slide, but here we are. So that's me on the right. There's Richard waving there. He's our People Research Data Commons uh, engagements person and Andy is on the line here somewhere too. You can say hello Andy. Andy is your research data commons uh, person for Planet. So if you're thinking I think I want to find out more about those other research data commons you know who to contact now 
And if you'd like to have a chat to someone about the Hass Indigenous Research Data Commons or just know where to start talking to someone about it, you're very welcome to uh, contact me and I'm very happy to connect you with anyone from our Research Data Commons. But I'm going to end this on our traditional slide, which says subscribe and connect to the ARDC newsletter. So you can find us through the ARDC um, website, with which we've seen a lot of pages from today. Um, you can contact us, uh, Andy, Richard and myself. We all monitor that email address called contact at ARDC. So if you send an email to that address, it's going to reach one of us um, or all of us. <laughs> but we usually, um, yes, so we, we divide it up between us. And yes, that's all ways to find us. So um, yeah, so that's that's the end of this presentation. So um, are there are there any questions? It looks like there were a lot of a lot of questions in the chat. I'm just going to stop sharing and just hope the you can probably hear that rain pelting down outside. So yes, so thanks to everyone. So it's been great. It's been great to have you. So does anyone have any questions? Uh, Kit, oh, I think you've got a. They were just mainly my links. I was just going to say, don't don't have a look okay. up and down. <laughs> it's mainly my links. Yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Kit. I think Kit is, uh, is, is giving me a bit of a hand just to keep an eye on on questions and things. But would anyone like to ask ask anything, or is there anything I can tell you more about, or um, or would you like to have a chat? Any any comments or thoughts? Oh, thank you, Alex. Um, that's nice. Always nice to have a, oh, that's good. Oh, I have to run to your next thing. That's okay. Um, yeah. So if anyone has any, any other questions, um, oh, I will, I will stop the recording as well.